Jeez, get out of here, freaking creepy. How's it going, everybody? My name is Al, and welcome to the Nerd Room. Today we're playing some more Octopath Traveler. So in the last episode, after getting uh, lost for a bit, uh, we were finally able to find our way here to Still Snow in order to continue Primrose's story. And upon arriving, we actually met up with one of Primrose's old maids, who told us where to find the uh, man marked with a crow. So now I guess we just have to talk to her. And then we'll be on our way. But before we begin, guys, if you like what you see here, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon down below to stay notified. Alright, so before we actually do head out, uh, there's one thing I want to do quickly. So yeah, I was right in that fighting the monsters here uh, yielded a lot more XP. I was able to level up a lot faster. And uh, one such move that I got for Primrose was this one called Bewildering Grace, I think it was. And basically what it did was that it caused some random effect to happen. And uh, while I was using it, one of the effects that happened was that after the fight, I got a hundred times the job points. So yeah, after using that, uh, I earned a shit ton of job points. Like, Ulbrich's got 11,000, Primrose has 8,000, Cyrus has 9,000, and Ophelia also has 9,000. <laughs> And I decided to save unlocking the last skill so that you guys could see it because I have a feeling it'll show us what this skill is. So yeah, I guess without further ado, let's see what happens here. Alright, so we unlocked Surpassing Power. Nice. So what do we unlock down here? Brand's Thunder. Okay. Oh, Divine Skill. Unleash a tremendously powerful sword attack on a single foe. Okay. Well, I have enough to buy it, so I might as well. Okay, we unlocked Encore, nice. And, uh, Seal, Sel, Seltige Key? I have no idea what that first word is, but let's just see what it does. Uh, for three turns, skills performed by a single ally that usually target one foe will affect all foes instead. Ooh, let's see what Cyrus gets then. Alifan's Enlightenment. Uh, for three turns, spells cast by a single chosen ally that usually target all foes will instead be focused on a single foe at increased intensity. Oh, okay, so it's basically the the opposite of what Primrose's skill does. And now, Ophelia. Uh, Elfrix... Au... Aus, auspices? Hold on. Like, the word that I couldn't pronounce on Primrose's skill, I'm pretty sure was a word they made up for the game, but I think that might be an actual word, so let me see here. Auspice. Auspice, okay. Uh, a divine or prophetic token. All right then. Uh, for three turns, skills performed by a single chosen ally will trigger twice. Oh, dang. All right, now let's see what support skills they got here. Uh, surpassing power increases the maximum damage that can be dealt by the equipping character to Holy crap, 99,999. Dang! <laughs> okay, yes please. Alright, so, geez, what does the rest of them have then? Uh, Encore. Once per battle, upon being incapacitated, you'll recover with 25% of your maximum HP. Okay. So that's basically like she just injures the hit. Nice. Uh, vim and Vigor. The equipping character will regenerate HP each turn. Oh, yes please. And... Saving Grace. Grants the equipping character the ability to be healed above their maximum HP. Oh. Dang, those last support skills are pretty kick-ass. Alright then. Well, I'd say we're ready to go, so... Let's go then. Hey there, Ariana. How goes it? Wait until the carriage arrives? Yes, let's do this thing. We got places to be. That man there is Orin. He drives the carriage. Okay, pleasure to meet you, Orin. He has a sharp eye and a suspicious nature. That's why he was hired. That is... unfortunate. Hello. I'm Primrose. I wish you a pleasant evening, sir. Humph. <laughs> Haven't seen you around here before. You a new girl? I am. This will be my first night in the Master's service. Well, no one's told me about it, so you ain't getting in my carriage. Alright then. Cautious indeed. Okay, I guess we'll need to figure out another way to get on that carriage. 
You know, before I came here, I was a dancer. Oh, and I think Primrose has just thought of the plan for us. Men said that once they'd seen me on the stage, nothing could ever satisfy them again. Would you like a little show? I think you'll find it most... stimulating. Huh. Is that a... is that a good, huh? You done with your little show? Okay then. I... am. Did you not enjoy it? Seen better, seen worse, I reckon. I see. Then do not allow me to trouble you further. Okay, so much for that, I guess. Ah, uh, don't let it get you down, Primrose. You still got it. It was a most beautiful dance, my lady. Thank you, Ariana. But your praise is not the prize I sought. I did try to warn you, my lady. The man is no fool. Indeed. I must find another way. All right, then. So... What should we do? Oh, I should go back and talk with Ariana. Okay, thank you, Primrose. <laughs> Perhaps there's someone in town who could convince Orin to change his mind. All right, Ariana. Oh, wait, we have some travel banter first. Hold on. Oh, it's with Cyrus, okay. You dance beautifully. Thank you. You were positively inspiring. I wish I could dance like that, but alas. Hehe. <laughs> two left feet, right? I'm afraid so. I dared not go to the faculty balls for fear I'd trip over some poor girl and make a fool of us both. I wonder if lessons would help, or should I simply accept who I am and stick to my tomes? Well, you're probably a quick learner, and even the clumsiest people can manage the basic steps. The most important thing is to enjoy the dance, and let yourself go. Right, right. Don't be self-conscious. Of course, that makes sense. It would be rather wonderful to do all those complicated steps and not think about it. As much as I love scholarship, I love dancing, too. Huh. Gotta say, never got that vibe from Cyrus. Well, if you're that eager, I could give you some pointers. You'd do that? Why, I would be most grateful if you could. Okay then. So Cyrus likes dancing. There we go. Well, anyway, Ariana, you have any tips for us? Uh, rumor has it that Orin owes the tavern keeper a debt. What sort of debt? I couldn't say. Okay. Tavern keep, you say. Well then. Let's go see if the Tavern Keep wants to talk with Orin. Uh, you the Tavern Keep? Yep. All right. Come along. I have somebody I'd like you to talk to. Admit it now. Wouldn't you care to spend a little more time with me? You want me to have a word with Orin? Uh, yes. I'll think about it. Pray, come hither. All right. Right this way, my good sir. Hello again, Orin. Master Barkeep. Always a pleasure to see my kind benefactor. What brings you here? All right, perfect. Uh, you want me to give the new girl a ride? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, of course, sir. As you wish. Least I can do to repay your kindness. Okay, there we go. Hop in, woman. We don't have all night. All right, then. Off we go, I guess. Ready to go? Let's do this thing. Thank you, Mr. Barkeep. Here we go, then. Oh, flashback time. Primrose. Father, please. Let me try just once more. You have tried enough. Now you must be still and reflect upon why you continue to fail. Oh, that was a that was a little cold. Good advice, but still a little cold. <laughs> Not gonna lie. You are my daughter, the lone daughter of House Azelheart. You must be strong, stronger than you are now. Yes, father. Answer me this, Primrose. What is required of the head of a great house, the Lady of House Azelheart? The Lady of House Azelheart must safeguard her family's success and glory. She must be strong enough that no other house might overshadow our own. A fair answer. But hear me well, Brimrose. Worth is not found in the eyes of others. 
that which truly matters most lies within. What the head of our house must value above all is faith. Faith? Faith shall be your shield. These are our house words, and what they mean is that you cannot waver until you have done what you know in your heart of hearts must be done. It is the determination to keep your eyes fixed on the path before you, though a thousand indignities may seek to trip you up along the way. You must find that faith in yourself. Yes, Father. Primrose, I would entrust this dagger to you. Our words are engraved upon the blade. See that they are engraved upon your heart as well. Alright then, so that's when she got her dagger, I guess. Father. Lady Primrose, are you alright? Ariana. You must have been very weary. I... I was just thinking about Father. Even in my memories, he will not stop lecturing me on how to live my life. Lord Azelhart was a man of unwavering principles. That he was. He taught me the sword, he taught me my letters, he taught me what it meant to live with dignity and honor. <laughs> he taught me all that I know. He always told me, choose wisely what to believe in and have faith in your beliefs, for that faith shall be your shield. What do I believe in? My lady? End of the line. Oh, okay. Guess we're here. This is where I take my leave. And not a word of this to the man in charge. I don't know who you are, but I know you don't belong here. Alright. No problem, Oren. Thanks for the ride. Hmm. Once, long ago, House Azelhart was locked in a vicious struggle with several of the other high houses. The tales say that my forebears dirtied their hands with many inglorious deeds in those days. One time, the head of House Azelhart invited his liege lord to the castle for a great feast, only to murder him and every last man in his party to seize power for himself. This lord had been a cruel man, and perhaps my forebear did the common folk a great service, but it did not win him any friends. Still, my family never relinquished the power they had seized, and they never lost faith in their convictions. Faith shall be your shield. Unwavering belief in the righteousness of what they had done protected them from any slings and slights. Did it? The petty squabbles of great houses concern me no longer, but our words still guide me, as they have guided my family for so long. As long as I have something to believe in, this is all I need. Lady Primrose, what is it that... Lady Primrose, what is it that you believe in? Ariana swallowed the question, her words hanging in the air. She feared what the answer might be. Did you say something, Ariana? It's nothing, milady. Alright, I guess that's the place then. This is the Obsidian Parlor. The dark rumors about it never cease, yet it remains cloaked in shadow. They say men of influence from across the realm have their hands in the buying and selling of women here. I have plied my trade here for several years now. In that time, many of the girls who came here have disappeared as suddenly as they came. Yes, I am a whore, and a cheap one at that, sold to this place for a price that would not buy you a good horse. Who knows when I'll be sold again and to where for another pittance. Pittance? Am I pronouncing that right? Hold on. Pittance. Pittance. Okay, so I was. Uh, a very small or inadequate amount of money paid to someone as an allowance or wage. Okay. Well, dang. When I think of that, it, it scares me. Forgive me, Lady Primrose. I do not deserve your pity. Okay. Make your way through this cave. It will take you to the master's chambers. If you go quietly, no one will be the wiser of your coming. But Lady Primrose, do be careful. You as well, Ariana. I must be getting to work, so this is where I must leave you. Of course, Ariana. Thank you for all you have done. Take care of yourself.
and have faith. All right. Well, let's do this thing. Oh, more travel banter. Faith shall be your shield. A fine motto. You think so? Tis honest and forthright. Virtues I strive to uphold. If you are in need of a swordsman to defend that motto, you need only ask. We are fellow travelers now, and so I am in your service. I'm very grateful for it, too. Having you nearby already gives me courage enough. But when you pledge your sword, why, I believe nothing will stop me. I hope that I might also call on your help, should the need arise. Of course, whenever you need me. All right, then. There we go. Just reaffirm the whole teamwork aspect there. All right, well, time to sneak into the obsidian parlor, I guess. Let's do this. Okay. So what can we expect to find in here, then? Oh, okay, we're about to find out. Oh, boy. Okay. They're already throwing freaking golems at us. All right, well, let's see. You're vulnerable to swords. Oh, thank goodness you are. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. So what, did that reduce our accuracy or something? Oh, dang it, that's just what we need, isn't it? All right, let's see. Let's try out these, uh, these divine skills. Oh. Only usable at maximum boost. Okay, well. I guess it's good I find that out in a normal fight here rather than in the middle of a boss fight, so yeah. All right, well, let's just use uh, basic attack for now, I guess. Or miss, Dagnabbit. Oh, jeez. All right, um, let's see. Let's, let's analyze the big golem guy. Okay, not a whole lot of HP. Well, comparatively at least. And he's vulnerable to shadow damage, which Primrose can use. So there we go. And the guys back here are vulnerable to stabs, so let's just whack them. Dagnabbit. <laughs> oh, again with this mist. Jeez Louise, that stuff is really effective. All right, well, let's see if this misses. Nighthode, bring your shade. Much better. Oh, nice, and the little guy is vulnerable to shadows as well. What's this? What's this? Oh, dang it, they can horrify me as well. Oh, jeez. Um, let's try lightning damage. Okay, no one's vulnerable to lightning damage. How about light damage? No one's vulnerable to light damage either. Okay. Uh, all right, Ulbrick, just hit him with a level slash. Hacha! Oh, frickin' A, stop with the mist! Oh my goodness, it, the mist is affecting Primrose for nine turns. Come on! Well, they're able to inflict uh, status effects out the butt, but at the very least, they don't seem to be doing much damage at the moment. Okay, okay, I need to get rid of those freaking crows, because I think they're the ones inflicting all these freaking effects on me. All right, let's see. Uh, what are you guys vulnerable to? Okay, they are vulnerable to daggers, nice. Uh, let's see, I can use spearhead, and that should hit him, right? But that... Oh, dang it, spearhead missed! Okay, well, at least I get to go first in the turn. All right, let's see. Uh... I guess just another level slash. Erg. What's this? Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh. Oh jeez. Cyrus, you all right? Oh my goodness, that was close. Okay, I got to do some serious damage to these guys. So freaking Let's just do firestorm. Okay, there we go. All right, and Ophelia, uh, keep Cyrus breathing. Whew. All right, now these two ravens are going. Oh, yeah, it's definitely the ravens casting the mist. Jeez Louise, I really should have brought Alphen along. Because his ability to remove status effects would be instrumental in this fight. All right, so I think I'll have Ulbrich incite them, and then I'll boost his defense afterwards. Oh, wait a minute, actually, I can- I think I can boost his defense with Primrose, actually. Let's see. Uh, yes, there we go. Perfect. Oh, dang it, really? 
They they have a move that inflicts horrified on all of my party members, or at least has a chance to. Dag, nab it. Are you kidding me? It missed all four of them? Oh my goodness. Okay, there we go. I broke one of the Raven's defenses finally. Hey, yay, yay. All right, I gotta learn what else that Raven's freaking weak to. Wind damage. All right, I don't have access to wind damage. They have one more weakness. Let it be a useful one. Spears, nice. Okay, so Ulbrich can break their defenses. Okay, I have got to be close to killing these dang birds, right? Oh yes, they're in the red. I will cut you down. Okay, good. I killed one of the ravens. That's one less source of these dang status effects. Come on! Yes! Alright, Ulbrich. Can you- Oh, dang it, I don't have enough for level slash. Oh, jeez, I freaking- Oh, boy! I absolutely tore through Ulbrich's SP, didn't I? Jeez, Louise. Alright, well, let's just hit him with a basic spear attack and hope it hits, I guess. Okay, good. There we go. Now I just have to- Wait for all this bad juju to go away. Perfect. Okay. Should have studied harder. Jeez Louise. I really should have brought Alfin along for this one. But I'm here now, so I guess I'll just have to... Guess I'll just have to fight my way through it. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. What are these things? Okay, at least they're weak to shadow damage. Frickin' hey. I, I can't tell if these are living things or if they're constructs or something. Well, either way, they're standing in my way, I guess, so let's just fight through them. Well, we know they're weak to shadow damage. What else are they vulnerable to? Staffs, okay. I can work with that. Just do that. Beautiful. And let's see, you vulnerable to swords? The you are not. Okay. Let's see now. Uh, analyze again. They're vulnerable to spears. Okay, there we go. Alright, Cyrus, they have but one more weakness. Bows. Okay. Okay, I don't have anyone who uses bows, so whatever. You know what? Let's see what this, uh, let's see what these divine skills can do. I think I'm gonna use, uh, primroses on, uh, on Ulbrich to make his spearhead affect all of them. Or both of them, I guess. <laughs> so let's see. With the grace of Seal Tige. Oh, Seal Tige. Okay, there we go, another benefit. It taught me how to pronounce that word. Oh, wait a minute. Dang it, I don't have enough. Ugh, dang it, I forgot I don't have enough uh, SP for Robert to do any skills. All right, well, I'll just have him eat an inspiriting plum. Then I'll have Cyrus give another, give him another. All right, so if uh, Seal Tige's seduction does what it uh, does what it advertises, this should hit all of them. There we go. I shall pierce you through. Nice. It's a very simple skill, but I can see that being very handy in the future. Same with Cyrus's as well, because Ulbrich's level slash can already do decent damage, but if that damage was intensified on a single foe, that would be absolutely killer. And actually, Cyrus could use it on himself too, because all of his spells affect the entire enemy team. But if I need to just hit one person... Ooh... Jeez, I gotta level up the other, uh, the other members of this adventuring party ASAP, just to see what their divine skills are. Because these things kick ass. Oh. Wait a minute, how much damage is a Amplified Cross Strike gonna do? Time to find out! <laughs> Four digits! Booyah! Alright, Primrose. Finish this guy off with a nice Moonlit Waltz. Perfect. Alright. Oh. Okay. What's up? Oh, hello. And who might you be? Meanwhile... Meanwhile what? Enter! Hello? And you are? Beg your pardon. Bishop of the Flame. Okay. Master Rufus, 
Pray have mercy and hear my plea. She was my only daughter. I spared no effort in raising her to be a fine lady. Each day I brushed her beautiful hair and dressed her in the finest silks. Okay. She, she was everything to me. But then, then she was sullied by the son of a country lordling. She could not bear being dishonored so, and on the eve of her wedding day, she took her own life in her shame. Oh boy. Never again will I stroke my daughter's long, beautiful hair. Okay. And when I think of that lordling living his days in luxury, with no punishment for his heinous deeds, it keeps me awake night after sleepless night. Master Rufus, please lend me your strength. Lend me your power, that I might have my vengeance against that sinful house. Father Escart, we are friends, are we not? B but of course. And friends are always there with a helping hand in times of need. I trust you will lend me your strength when I am in need. You are a bishop in the Order of the Sacred Flame. You have much to offer me. Anything you wish, Master Rufus. Anything at all. Then it would be my pleasure to help you. You must be lonely after the loss of your precious daughter, Father. I will give you one of my own girls. Hmm. How about Ariana? Oh, no. She is close to your daughter's age, and has a sweet enough disposition. Use her as you like, and I trust you will enjoy her. Okay. Oh, thank you, Master Rufus. Truly, your generosity knows no bounds. Okay, something tells me this guy didn't like his daughter like a daughter. Yeah, jeez, get out of here, freaking creepy. <laughs> Debts are such a tricky business. But one must make hay while the sun shines. Okay then. That was, uh... That was interesting, wasn't it? Alright, well, I guess we know that we found our man. And we also know that he isn't exactly what you would call, uh... Salt of the Earth. Although he did help murder our father and owns a brothel, so that part was pretty obvious, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I guess that was, a. Uh, Good enough place to cut the episode. Jeez Louise. <laughs> so yeah, I guess in the next part, we will make our way through the rest of this cave and hopefully deal with Rufus. But until then, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please be sure to hit that like button down below. My name is Al and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.